Welcome to Speedway. It's a small town nestled all by itself on the west side of Indianapolis. Its name suggests its heart, auto racing. But even if you're not a fan of watching cars go around the track like hundreds of thousands of people do who make this trek each and every year, there is plenty to enjoy when you welcome yourself to Speedway. history buff or a gearhead of any sort, this building behind me is exactly where you need to start when you come to Speedway, Indiana. It's the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Hall of Fame Museum, opened in 1975. Anything and everything you need to know about this very special race. I'm Donald Davidson and I'm the historian at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway Hall of Fame uh, Foundation Museum is open every day of the year except for Christmas Day and Thanksgiving Day. And it's a very diversified collection. Early day passenger cars that were built in Indiana, so there's Stutz and Duesenberg and a Marmon and I think a Cole, uh, although the, the display does change uh, from time to time. We have the 1911 winning car, and uh, that's not a mock-up, that's uh, original, probably about, we, we think it's the third coat of paint, but it's original body, and just everything about, except for maybe, the, I know the tires are fairly recent, they had specially made tires, but it won the first 500 in 1911, and the intent for racing at the Speedway in the early days was that they would be stripped down passenger cars, but what the Marmon company did, Nordyke and Marmon, uh, their engineers, uh, they, they entered two cars. One was a stripped down passenger car. The other was a special racing car that the engineers built in one corner of the, the shop. And it was a single seater. The driver, who was also an engineer, Ray Haroon, remembered something that he'd seen on a horse-drawn vehicle several years before and rigged up what is believed to be the very first rear view mirror ever used on an automobile. And uh, so he went along and uh, averaged 74.602 miles an hour, uh, six hours and 42 minutes, which sounds awfully long now, but that was very quick in 1911. One of the most iconic things at the museum is the Borg Warner Trophy, which was in, unveiled in 1936. It's sterling silver, and uh, it has a bass relief sculpture of every winner. And uh, when it was unveiled in 1936, uh, it had every winner up to 35 and a new face gets added each year. And uh, so that is probably one of the most recognizable trophies in all of sports. And uh, typically that's here, except that uh, 500 weekend, it's, it's in and out and in and out of the museum. We have an area called the glass area. And in it, um, on uh, one wall, is a replication of the way the garage area used to look before 1985, or up through 85. And in fact, there is actually a garage with a, with a car in it. And uh, when you look in there, the old timers get very nostalgic because it's like going back in time. That's what exactly what, uh, what the garages look. Uh, in front of that, there is a, sort of a revolving exhibit, uh, normally for a, a few months at a time. And uh, for the next few months up through uh, November, uh, is a tribute to Dan Gurney and uh, the All-American Eagle. So they're mostly uh, open-wheel uh, rear-engine Eagles, but uh, for a short time, we're gonna have the 1967 Le Mans winning GT40 Ford that Gurney shared with Dan, with um, uh, A.J. Foyt in winning the 67 Indianapolis 500. And there's, a, there's approximately a dozen cars in that exhibit. When people come in here, I, I enjoy watching to see where do they go and, and, and uh, what do they look at. And uh, I see ladies coming in here, uh, then maybe they're the spouse and perhaps they'd rather be somewhere else. And, uh, their eyebrows lift and uh, they, they, they like the trophy. So uh, whether you like racing cars, pure racing cars, or motorcycles, or classic automobiles, and foreign sports cars, uh, Formula One cars, there, there's something here just probably for everybody because we believe it's a very diversified collection and uh, we have 
hosts that are available to answer questions. They're all very, very knowledgeable. Some of them had an involvement with the event. And uh, so, you know, come and have a good time. Time for a break. But first, a welcome to Speedway trivia question. What's the distance of one lap around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Is it A, five miles, B, 2.5 miles, or C, seven miles? Your answer when we return. What's the distance of one lap around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? The answer to the Welcome to Speedway trivia question is B. It is 2.5 miles to make one lap around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway track. Walking through the garage area here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, you may notice something a little bit different this year, where in years past, all the cars looked pretty much exactly the same. This year, new body styles are allowing pit crews to tweak and manage their cars to their exact specifications. Fundamentally, these cars are super different from last year. So last year, it was a spec aero kit, which means that every car had the same aero kit. This year, the competitors were able to design their own aero kit. So fundamentally, this car is just completely different from last year in every way, shape, or form that affects performance. So the, the, the only thing that's the same on this car from last year is the uh, what we call the monocoque, which is where the driver sits, the foot box where, where the actual pedals are, and the floor is the same mostly. But one thing that you'll notice is there's holes in the floor that are different from last year. And the reason for that is, is to prevent the cars from flying once they lift up. So, so there, that's a safety improvement that, that was uh, added since last year, you know, since these cars are going 230 plus miles an hour around the track. <laughs> well, crew chiefs are always tinkering, you know that. Even when we had the standard aero kit before, you know, they were, they were tweaking with, with little riblets that, that, that called wickers that you're allowed to put on the wings to try to get a little bit of performance in some area versus another. But yeah, they're very excited about the opportunity to be able to show that, that they can make their car go faster than the next guys. To win a race here at Indy, especially on the super speedway, it requires drivers, it requires cars, it requires teams, you know, it requires all kinds of things. And all of that has to work together. So driver obviously is the one that's driving the car. So clearly clearly the driver is a very important tool, but if you don't have the team, if you don't have the engine, you don't have the car, you can't win a race. We supply tires for all the cars. Well, during race week here in Indy, we're really supporting the teams for all the uh, practice that occurs for the Indy 500. We'll be here for uh, about 10 days practicing for the Indy 500, and we'll go through, the teams will go through 36 sets of tires for the month of May for quali practice, qualifying, and the race. So these guys are mounting and balancing the tires, and we're out on the pit lane taking temperatures and making sure everything's running to our high standards. Uh, on a nice sunny day like this, we'll see the tires run a little bit hotter than they would otherwise. Uh, if we get a 90 or 95 degree day, which has happened here in the past, we'll see the tire temps up at the top end of their range, which means the tires will be running somewhere around 200 degrees. The tires last typically about 70 miles, which is about as far as the car can go on one tank of fuel. We call it a fuel stint. So the tires and the fuel are matched so that when the fuel is gone, the tires are pretty much worn out. Now these guys are out there driving on our products at 220, 230 miles an hour. So we take the, the, those products very seriously, we take those tires very seriously. And everything from the engineering, design, development, building of the tires, all the way through to these guys mounting and balancing the tires. We, we take that very seriously and we very tightly control what we do. I believe it's 5,400 tires. For, we had a practice session the first week of the month and then with the practice and qualifying a race, it's about 5,400 tires. So it doesn't matter which car crosses that legendary yard of bricks first. The team here at Firestone, well, they win the Borg Warner Trophy each and every year. Coming up after this short break, we'll talk to some fans and walk you through the IndyCar Fan Village right after the break. Indy 500, super fan in the house, check it all the way. Drop the back, woo! Head to toe, we good to go. You already know, flip it, scrip it, dip it. Get it real quick, cause we gonna hit the bricks. Oh yeah, baby, crank it, crank it. Mmm, it's all the way loud and proud, baby. You already know, woo! Indy 500 for life, baby. Forever, you already know. Check it out without a doubt, and scream and shout, woo! Yeah, baby. 
Time for a break, but first, a welcome to Speedway trivia question. Who recorded the fastest official lap around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Is it A, Mario Andretti, B, Dario Franchitti, or C, Ari Lewandyk? Your answer when we return. Who recorded the fastest official lap around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? The answer is C. Ari Lewandyk posted the fastest official lap at 237.498 miles per hour during qualifying on May 12, 1996. Welcome back. We know a lot of people come here for the racing, but it's not just the cars on the track that get people going here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This is truly a social event at its core, and the fans love the experience. The month of May at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is about many things. There is, of course, the race, but it's much more than that. For one, there's the food. There is any number of greasy, salty, sweet, grimy goodness you can discover. Not bad. Not bad at all. From steaks slathered in onions and red peppers, to kettle corn, to smoked turkey legs. Washing it down with lemonade, water, soda, or the adult beverage of your choice. For others, it's merely the people from all walks of life, all walking the hallowed grounds of the legendary Speedway. I think the people, I love the, the excitement, the people love watching the race, but uh, the music that they have, you know, the entertainment, and the drivers are wonderful. It's, it's exciting. And then I love to tell everybody else what happened, <laughs> share the experiences. But for Carol Umbarger, this race, it's a part of her, not just her life, but a part of who she is. I can't walk up the steps hardly anymore, and I like to go high up the pagoda and sit there because I can see the big screen that shows me all the way around the racetrack, but also over there they have the drivers listed of what speeds they're going. So I can see everything from right there. When you go to one spot, a lot of times you can't see as much, and there's always somebody walking by. For 27 years, Carol has found herself here meeting a multitude of drivers, brandishing toys and trinkets that are much more, like this ring. She says she found it in a resale store for $6. She wouldn't sell it for $6 million. It just took one second for me to say I want that. Didn't even know if it was going to fit or not, but it does. And I told Elio that he has his championship ring and I have mine. <laughs> it's it's a, one of my treasures. Absolutely one of my treasures. I've never seen anything quite like it, and I've had, I've had so many people compliment it on me. One guy this year came up and asked if I'd had it special made, and I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, I, I just like it because of its size. I have big fat fingers, so I can wear it easily. <laughs> For first timers to the track, though, you could start your experience here in the IndyCar Fan Village. It's like the fan zone here. Like basically what you're gonna do here first is where it says start your engines. This is the registration station. So you are get yourself registered and basically it acts as a VIP pass. You got, we gotta get you hooked up with one of these, come on. I'll show you. The Firestone wristband is actually going to allow you to check in to the different stations, right? So we got our awesome friends over at Honda and Firestone. Go ahead and try to get registered. Let's okay. go ahead and see. So it says register your IndyCar Fan Village wristband. All right, I'll log in with my Twitter. Oh yeah, there you go. I'm a Twitter guy. Twitter guy, I'm yeah. So you get, definitely have to be sure to follow us on Twitter. That's going to be at IndyCar. So now let's go. You gotta scan it. There you go. So come on in. You are in the IndyCar Fan Village. Now we're trying to roam about everything we got going on. And of course, when you see check-in, that means that you're gonna check on in with Honda. It looks like we're being foolish, right? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> ah, we just did it. We're winning the IndyCar race. High five. That was a great one. Check us out. Look at it. Oh yes. So cool. <laughs> That's right, and it would, when fans come on in to Honda, they're actually able to receive this, take this away, you can share it on your Facebook, share it with your friends yeah. and family. Here with Honda, you can actually get your awesome race gear, so we wanna go, go ahead and get you, oh, oh hooked fanny up, pack. fanny pack. Fanny yes. pack, that's um, right. Honda racing lanyards from HPD, and then we also have a little keychain. Check that out, so, we got choices over oh, here in the IndyCar Fan Village, which is great. 
Oh, sweet, caught it. This is to test your PSI right here. So you actually are pumping up a tire and seeing if you can go ahead and get it to the um, the PSI of the actual IndyCar tires that's running on the track. <laughs> that might be tough, right? Now, this station is always so popular. I'm telling you, it's the airbrush tattoo station. Oh, like you can yes. get yourself tatted up. Yes. I mean, this is really great. And the best thing about it right now, Firestone's got a great contest going on where you actually can show your best country music star pose cool. with the guitar and you have a chance to win a pair of Firestone uh, racing oh. headphones, which is great. So let me let me see your let me see your pose. Right, let me on. see your pose. You what, what you got? Oh, gotta hold your car. Oh yeah, rock on. That's right. Which brings me to the great point: the Rolling Stones is gonna be here in Indianapolis on July the fourth. And here in the IndyCar Fan Village throughout the whole entire weekend, I, myself, will be giving away tickets to the show. So throughout the weekend, you definitely don't want to miss out on that. Check this sweet jacket out. I mean, you can definitely come and get yourself hooked up. The official trackside store is right in the IndyCar Fan Village. And of course, children got cool baby stuff. And this is my favorite, the sunglasses, right? Let's check out the sunglasses. Which one? My favorite is right here. Let's be, yeah. let's be twins. Let's be twins. Yeah. So you can definitely come get oh, these yeah. purchased. Swag. Come check out what we got going on. You've seen a few of the people and you've seen a little bit of the food, but one thing that we haven't shown you yet, the music here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway during race week. Along with big names like Florida Georgia Line, a lot of local bands also participate like this one, High Octane. It's all in a day's fun here at the track, and that's just a small taste of what you can experience here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway throughout race week. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you what to expect on race day and when you can expect it to happen. Stay with us. Who is the youngest winner of the greatest spectacle in racing? Is it A, Troy Rutman, B, Helio Castroneves, or C, AJ Foyt? Your answer when we return. Who is the youngest winner of the greatest spectacle in racing? The answer to your Welcome to Speedway trivia question is A, Troy Rutman. Rutman won the race in 1950 at the age of 22 years, 80 days old. Race day here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It is busy and it starts very early. You're gonna have to start lining your cars up at about 4.30 a.m. because the gates, well, they open at 6 a.m. Let's run you through a quick list of things going on here at the track today. Eight o'clock is the parade of bands where area high school and college bands come and parade around the circular track. 
9.30, you're gonna wanna see some very big names. It's the Celebrity Red Carpet, where all the famous people get to walk out and head to their suites. 10.50, a very cool event here at the track, the Vintage Car Laps, those old cars that we saw in the museum earlier in the show. They run the track at 10.50. Drivers come out at 11.37 precisely. That's the scheduled time for driver introductions. An old tradition here at 11.52, God Bless America will be sung by Florence Henderson. Following God Bless America, country music star Leanne Rimes will sing the national anthem at noon and the green flag drops precisely at 12.15 for the 99th running of the big race here in Indianapolis. There's an energy level at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway because everybody kind of eludes that, that Hoosier pride. It exudes from them. They're really just excited to be there. So that's, that's the other thing. The speed clearly is something that folks notice and 33 cars running on such a small track it was designed 105 years ago is pretty impressive to see and just the sheer number of people. So those are the things that I think you get. But as a Hoosier, what you really take away from it is it's just that opportunity to just really be proud of the fact that you live in the state of Indiana. It's sensational. You get very, very close to the cars. It's pretty fun. I have my boys with me. It's fun to watch. We hope you enjoyed our half hour special. Welcome to Speedway and hope you can get out to the race tomorrow. Should be a great time. And if you can't, try to make plans to come next year. 2016 marks the 100th running of the Great American Race. Thanks for watching.